Hello Sabre fans, and today I want to review a couple of Sabres that I got surprisingly fast. I actually ordered both of these Monday as two separate orders, and they came within a week. Um, I actually got this one the following Friday. This was a grab bag. And then I got this one just today, uh, so one week later. Um, and I had ordered this. I had some reward points. Um, I'll review this one last, of course. Um, and then I used the points to get this as a grab bag. Now, as a grab bag, this is a really good uh, deal because it is a dark standard issue uh, V3 um, with the grooves and an upgraded AV switch. It's a hundred dollar value that with the reward points that I earned from other purchases from Ultra Sabers, I basically just paid shipping on this and got it for free. Um, it's in great condition. There's no blemishes on the outside. Um, that's one of the things with grab bags is that um, they could have blemishes or imperfections. This one has a very peculiar imperfection I'll show you in a minute. Um, but um, I also ordered this without a blade because I like day blades and it just so happened I had a red day blade. Uh, I didn't select the color. I, you know, with a grab bag, just like a mystery box, it's, it can be completely random color. Um, but it just will happen that I had a red day blade and this was a red LED. So that worked out perfectly. And then of course, all the blades today I'm going to have pointed tips uh, because I do like the way those look. Uh, and if you'll notice too, this is an enhanced red tip. Uh, just a little plug for uh, the Custom Saber Shop. I recommend getting the enhanced red with a regular red because it, kill, it negates any dead spot that might be here. But back to the Sabre, what's interesting about this is that the battery setup, now normally battery setup for grab bags is uh, standard, so you'll get the four AAA batteries. Um, but this Sabre actually came with two AA's, not lithium ion. In fact, there's a little uh, warning label here that says not to use the lithium ion because it will burn out. Uh, the LED and void the warranty. So my thinking is they probably are running a little short on the four battery packs for the AAAs uh, and since the battery packs for the lithium ions are the same size as AA's, um, I think that's what they did. They ended, ended up just resistoring this for AA. So that's a slight imperfection, um, but for a red LED it is enough power. It's quite bright. Um, the only inconvenience is that I now had to order some rechargeable double A's, but um, that really wasn't that, that too bad. Um, so really for a grab bag that uh, I ordered without the blade, which would normally be $55, um, and I had those points from previous purchases, so I paid shipping, and that was it. Um, this is an over $100 saver. Uh, quite pleased with that grab bag. Um, next is the piece de resistance of my collection. So I've been wanting this one for quite some time. Uh, with the recent sale, it was 15% off for any sound saber. I was going to wait for a raffle, but I decided to go ahead and buy it now. And I was incredibly pleased that this came within one week. Um, so I got this saber with V4 sound, um, and then with blue LED with a red flash on clash. Now, right now I've got this um, on the mute sound font. That's one of the things that I really like about the um, uh, V4 sound is that you do have a mute sound font. So uh, I can do a video like this. It's not going to blare out the sound, which is very loud, by the way. Um, but also you get, you still get the flash on clash, which really sets this apart from a regular stunt saber that wouldn't have sound. But essentially, um, just to change the sound fonts, you just hold the saber when it's off. You heard that beep. And you can scroll just scroll through some of the different fonts. They're kind of like ancient saber, so when you've picked that... So when you select your saber, you just hold that, and there's your font. Let me put 
that back to Mew. So when you hear that little beep, you know that it's your mute. And so you just hold. Confirm. And we're back to the light just being on. Now, I've, of course, made a few modifications to this. This is, of course, the Crimson Scorpion. Um, it is a very large hilt. And just to compare uh, with the dark standard issue, um, much longer, very hefty. Uh, and, of course, part of that is because this actually does have an outer sleeve. You can see some of the inner sleeve here uh, and here. Uh, and this just kind of goes over it. Uh, and one of the things that's great, comes with a cover tech wheel automatically. Um, I, I really need to get a holder for that because um, I, I don't have a cover tech on any of my other savers. Uh, I really like this spike and ball pommel, uh, which is nice about this is that this comes apart into two, par two bits. So you either have You can have this little thin neck here, and you can just put this on the end, like so, and, and not have that thin neck. But I, I do like that. Of course, me being me, I can't not modify my lightsabers. I have to add a little personal touch. So one of the things that I've done on this saber, um, so since it's got the guarded switch that's a little bit of black there, I've added just a little bit of electrical tape within uh, in between these grooves and then a little electrical tape in that uh, section there. Just to give a little bit more uh, black because this is definitely a dark side saber. Um, I also replaced the uh, retention screws with these thumb screws. Uh, one of the things that I think is interesting about the Scorpion is that because you've got this claw, the retention screws are on the other side of that. And I kind of like how that gives kind of an insect look, which is appropriate, um, as this being the scorpion having the claw and stingers. Um, and then, of course, it has a great choke point right here. This is a heavy saber. This is definitely my heaviest saber. But what I really like about it is, as heavy as it is, the balance point is pretty close right here. I mean, really, the balance point is right here. Now I have a thin walled blade, so I imagine if I've got a thicker blade, uh, that would shift the balance. But for the, just a thin walled blade, um, this is very comfortable. You know, it swings very, very well. Um, mainly, though, the reason I got this in blue, as you saw, it has blue with the red flash on Clash. That's a very stark contrast color. I'm really happy with that. But what I wanted is a photon blade. So that'll react with the blue for a nice green. And that comes right through these windows here. The flanged uh, emitter here has those windows. Uh, and as you can see, even with these thumb screws, that light comes through perfectly. But what's really nice about the photon blade is that even though it turns, red, uh, turns blue into green, it doesn't affect red. So the red still comes through very nice. So that's what I like about that. Um, and of course you see these dimples in the claw. This is just a great saber. Uh, I really like the detail, uh, the heft of it. Um, this really is going to be the centerpiece of my collection. Uh, and actually, I want to show you with my dark saber blade. Let me go get that. So this is my dark saber. Um, clear flat acrylic blade and it actually has a slight uh, angle you can't really see it but this kind of angles back so I was worried that the this claw was going to interfere but it, it's got quite a bit of clearance so that's good um, but what's really cool is um, you know the dark saber vibrates so by having the blue and then just setting the lock up Yeah, I think that has a really cool effect. It really looks like it's almost purple, um, the way that it vibrates between blue and red, and that's a pretty cool feature. 
Now the other thing that I want to mention about this is that the the insertion depth is very deep. Um, so if you see those dimples in the blade, um, and one, one complaint that I do have is sometimes they over tighten some of the, the, the screws. Um, so when I put this in I have to make sure that those line up uh, with the existing holes uh, otherwise you'll be able to see those dimples kind of through here. But if I push that through and put my thumb here, I just want to show you how deep. That's how much blade is in the saber. Uh, that's four, maybe five inches. That's that's fairly deep. Um, so I definitely recommend not only because of the length of this saber. You know, it's 14 inches from here to here, uh, 19 if you count the claw. Um, so it's definitely not uh, for a shorter blade. Uh, I ended up getting a 36 inch blade. Although I cut a couple inches off so that I could put uh, a pointed tip here. And then my photon blade is 34 inches. The tip, of course, adds an extra inch. So it's, it's pretty close. But um, I think it would be good for dueling because of that depth and because there's the two retention screws instead of just the one. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your blade flying out. Um, and it, it really does uh, get a good hold. Um, for the blade, but uh, I really enjoy this saber. Um, this is going to go top of the shelf uh, for sure, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy my review.